Yes. I, like a numbskull, forgot to mention Ricky's uh, social medias at the end of the episode. So if you guys want to go check out Ricky, he is Jiff Man Reviews on Instagram. He does a lot of great movie reviews. There's a lot of movies as well. So if you guys are interested in checking out his stuff too, it'll be in the description below. Welcome back. Oh, actually, you know what? I had a better way to do it. Let me try it again. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Doobie Podcast, the TV Movie Entertainment Needs Podcast. I'm your host, James, and sitting with me, as always, is Colin. How you doing, bud? I'm all right. How are you? Okay. And sitting with us today as well as a good friend of mine who uh, we had on Cinema Showcase, which you can check out now. Uh, he's known as Jeff Man on the internet. We know him as Ricky. How you doing, Ricky? I'm doing all right. Can't complain. You know, just enjoying the mellow, mellow day. Good. It's raining outside. Very, it- very lovely weather. That is a perfect way to talk about Tim Burton. Tim Burton opening. Tim Burton, Tim Burton, Tim Burton. Good, yes. uh, good, good for you guys. So today, of course, we're sticking with our writer's trend. Even though the writer's strike is technically over, we still want to do that and give them their praise. But in this time, we're also going to be talking a little bit also about the acting as well so we can get the actors their spotlight as they are still striking. So we're still going to be kind of going with our format, but we're going to be just doing a little bit more with their support as well. But mainly, like I said, writers. So this week, we are talking about Tim Sad Buys, Big Old Stop Motion, Gray Burton. Man, he's got a genre. I'll tell you that. Uh, so like I said, it's Ricky and Colin with us. I say we just get into it. Ricky, before what we do every single time with the director, we do this thing called the top four known for. And you just got to guess what you think his top four known for movies are. So when you go to the IMDb, IMDb, IMDb page, that's the thing that pulls up. What do you think it is? It's four movies. Okay. I'm going to go with Edward Scissorhands, okay. um, Batman. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to run through the other movies that I think would be good. Mm. I'm going to throw this one out there because I don't think a lot of people know about the Pee Wee movie, <laughs> which was, you know, we'll talk about that later. I don't want to say too no, much. No, right I get you. Uh, no, you, yeah. you, beat, you actually um, beat me to it. Yeah. And uh, what was, would be another one? Um it's another iconic movie. I'm going to go with Alice in Wonderland. Wow. Okay. Colin, what about you? Okay. Is it just movies? Yes. This is. Okay. I was going to throw in like Wednesday in there. No, no, no. Top four, like... known for okay. movies. I mean, I guess uh, you could say Wednesday, like as a conversation piece, but I don't. Based think off of your reaction, I don't think it's on the top four it's not of on your there, list. But... Um, it's not. But it should be. Anyway, um, so. Batman, Beetlejuice. Uh, there's so many he did. There's a lot. You know what? Just for shits and giggles, that uh, Planet of the Apes movie with Mark Wahlberg. He did not uh, do that. No yeah, shot. He did, he did, he did yeah, he that. Did. And he has a few he chimpanzees. That. That's the best point. No, yeah. wait. Hold on. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg travels back in time and then he yeah. United States with Abraham Lincoln. Yo, we just blew his mind. <laughs> Look at that. What? Yeah. Yeah. I knew the assignment. You didn't. <laughs> Shut up. No. Um, what else? There's a fourth one. Uh, I'm just going to go with Edward Scissorhands. You know what? No, I'm going to go with Beetlejuice 2, the unreleased no, Hawaiian. No, pick a movie Spectre. that's out. No, pick a movie that is out. Did you know, James, did you know about that? Yeah, we um, can't before... really talk about that right now. Oh, well, that sucks. But whenever whenever things get back to normal and everybody's got their fair, fair deals, we will talk about that. But Man. What? what a shame. I was prepared for that one. I completely wow. forgot about Beetlejuice. That's why I was like. Okay. okay, there's got to be one more. So you guys are you're kind of there. You're you're a bit of both. Mainly, did you both say Edward Scissorhands? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the only one you guys actually got on this. Really? Yeah, no. So it goes Edward Scissorhands, Corpse Bride, Frank and Weenie, and Sweeney Todd. I, I those, just saw Sweeney I Todd a few nights ago. The musical or movie? The mu- the mu- uh his his movie. Okay. I didn't see the. I haven't seen the musical. I just Neither saw his. Movie. Yeah. yeah, and. I, I kind of forgot Sweeney Todd was his as well. Like I knew it was Johnny Depp and it was bleak. So it had to be him. Yeah. But I kind of forgot that it was there. He made, he made a lot. So yes, those are his top four known for. He is a director credits of 41 and writer of 16, 16 of those being some short movies. Some uh, actually, actually did a music video for the killers. Um, oh yeah. I heard oh about really? 
He did. Which one? Uh, the uh, Bones. The Killer's Bones. Oh. Yeah. I, I haven't heard that song, but I heard it's good. Uh, he's done a lot of adaptations and done like a lot of short films, but the first <clears> one he did uh, that is his own story is Edward Scissorhands, which is a very weird movie. Yes, it is. Just it's it's just a Frankenstein, but toned down with scissor fingers. Yeah, it is one of his only movies. You have to watch sober, or you're gonna freak out. I freaked out, and I was sober. I yeah. So, so. It was, it's just weird, but also. Ed Asner, of all people in that movie, was I did not expect to see. But it was still a great movie. It, it's, oh, it's yeah. a great Hold on. Do you hear that again? Do you hear it? <laughs> no, I don't hear it. No. Dude, it is it, like I said, it's like Red Dawn. I I don't know. I <laughs> dude, I, I don't know how you guys can't hear it. It's louder than the microphone messing with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually you guys they snuck a speaker yeah. on my house or something. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I That's... was late on purpose. I had to get the plane ready. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> I, I don't get it. This is the second time. I'm freaking out. Okay, past that before, you know, Red Dawn exists. Nightmare Before Christmas was actually a movie I watched again after about 12 years of not seeing it. And one big takeaway for me was that... Wait, the... 12 years you haven't seen it? Give or take. More Not like, even on like the Disney channel, like during Halloween or no, Christmas. No, I was I was mainly watching other stuff like Kek Batowski or Teen Titans. Or wow. Something. Yeah, I just I'm mean, like it, it's it's never like a movie I've like yearned to go see. Like it's not like it's not my thing. Not stop motion, mm-hmm. just Tim Burton. <laughs> and that is the thing about okay. this movie is that it is un unwildly great with stop motion. Like it definitely set a trend for stuff. But. Did you guys rewatch it? This is a bigger question here. Did you rewatch yeah. it? You did. Yeah. Ricky? I did. Um, not recently. Okay, that's fine. The thing is, is in the opening song, this is Halloween. Yeah. Yep. Was it me that only thought it went, this is Halloween. Ha ha Halloween. Because they don't do that. I don't remember hearing them say that in the song. No. This is mean, uh, Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Ha, ha, Halloween. That's what I remember going. That's what I remember hearing. This is Halloween. Ha, ha, Halloween. I always ha. thought they said it twice, like, this, they is, said ha- it for, no, this they, is Halloween. They, they yeah. go that, and then they go, Halloween, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Halloween, Halloween. 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 They say Halloween yeah. four times. I thought it went, ha, ha, Halloween. Like, that's what I thought it went. Was this it is, just... No. I'm is that my own Mandela effect? I think so, yeah. Whoa, okay. That's fine. Well, I'm going insane. I'm hearing a plane go over my head. I'm hearing <laughs> the songs that don't exist. I think I might be. I think I might be insane. I mean, to uh, be fair, I was looking up Corpse Bride song lyrics the other night because when I was younger, the one song "Remains of the Day" that was like my favorite song in the movie. For some reason, the the opening um, lyrics. For some reason, I thought they were saying something about video games. <laughs> I actually have never seen the Corpse Bride. Really, it is. Oh. It, it is. There's a reason it's up there because I did want to say that, but. I I'm I'll get to it. It's just that like I I don't know why I couldn't get with it, and I think I only watched a four of his movies. I had a pretty busy week, but Ricky, go on with this conversation. I feel like I'm talking the only one here. What did you think <laughs> about Tim Burton's? So writing wise, go for it. Writing wise, all right. Um, he definitely has a style, <laughs> which I don't know if he's perfected because he's. Every movie I notice, like it's definitely macabre. It's very dark. He, that's mostly what he does. I mean, he does have some brighter films like Pee Wee, as I mentioned earlier, which is insane. I mean, yeah, but I mean, he took a darker tone on Dumbo. Dumbo was the worst movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, we're gonna talk about Dumbo. <laughs> I just like to we're bring up Dumbo. about Dumbo. No one's talking, talking about Dumbo. We're not talking about freaking. We're not talking about live Dumbo. action. Um, but he, what's the word I'm looking for? He can he knows how to tell both an original story, but at the same time he also throws in a lot of tropes, which is not bad. Like there's a reason tropes work and we've been using them for years in cinema writing and all that stuff. That's well said, dude. Uh, yeah. And and you guys both know that he didn't direct Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, he produced it because yeah. he was too busy doing Batman. Yes. Yeah, the he... studio just put his name on the poster yeah. because people knew Tim Burton and they're trying to sell tickets. Well, because it was yeah. his story and his characters. Yeah. Someone yeah. else took over the job of directing, which he did great. Yeah. That being 
Uh, can't remember it. Henry Selleck. Yes. He did, he did the directing. And as well as I also didn't know that uh, Danny Elfman both did the music and voiced Jack when he was singing. Yeah, that was crazy when I found that out. Danny Elfman sang as Jack when he was singing? Yeah. So when Jack was singing, it wasn't the same guy that was talking, like the Moana movie. Um, so it was no longer Johnny. That's surprising because Johnny's a really good singer. Yeah, he so, is. You've seen Sweeney Todd. He's an amazing singer. Like I had no idea. By the way, it's Chris, Chris Sarandon that plays Jack Salington. And the way, by the way, when I met oh, Moana, the dad, the voice is Moana is Tamara Morse. You are blowing my mind right now. So it wasn't Johnny Depp. No, it wasn't. Oh, oh God, no, no. It was Chris Sarandon as Jack Skellington and Catherine O'Hara as Sally. Oh, who you no. in? You may know her as Miss McAllister from the Home Alone movies, or if you know her from Shit's Creek as Moira. Great show. Uh, but Danny Elfman was a great show. Uh, but Danny Elfman was the voice, and Chris Sarandon was the talking. The way that Tamara Morrison was the voice of Moana's dad, and the guy that played George Washington was the singing voice. I can't remember his name right now. But Ricky, you're absolutely right. Very macabre, and he's got a very specific style that I think is timeless. But at yes. the same time, carries weight through generations. And Colin just wow. Pete, there you go. <laughs> I've had to confirm that, dude. For years, I thought it was Johnny Depp. That's fair. I can't fair. believe this. Yeah, I have to quit Tuvi. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Ricky. Who am I? <laughs> Jack and Johnny Depp. Who am I? What is this reality? <laughs> Danny Elfman, Chris Tucker. Who is it? Chris Tucker. I don't know. It was the only other Chris I could remember. I didn't remember last name. There's like five Chris's in Hollywood. And he went with Chris. Chris Pine, Chris Pratt, Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth. Tougher Walken. There's, there's so many. <laughs> er for Walken. Tougher Walken, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Corpse Bride, you rewatched that. I don't really know exactly. I mean, I feel like it's plain and simple. It's about a reanimated bride. Right. Yes, it's based off of Jewish folklore, apparently, is what I heard. What? Yes, and also I was doing some research. I don't know if this is 100% true, but apparently he made the movie for Helena, who was his wife at the time. Because I don't know. I think they split up. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So slow down. <laughs> they were married? Yeah. You know that? No. He met, I, forgot, I think he met her on Planet of the Apes. Yes, and yes, yes. And they got that's why she's in so many of his movies because it's his wife. I also very talented actress, Helena Bonham. Oh, yes, she but is amazing. Who is she of the wise? Yeah, Paul Giamatti. Wait, I gotta rewatch this movie. <laughs> I gotta rewatch this movie. In the... She's married to Paul Giamatti. No, no, no. Paul Giamatti was just in, in the original, in the 2001 Planet of the East. I was about to say, this is the best episode on TV. <laughs> The one with all the revelations, yes. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Wow. Okay, so good for him wrote, though. Yeah. Wrote it. So, so that is it. Is it was that all to that or? Um. Yeah, I think that's all I have. Like in terms wow. of like, fun little facts. Oh wow, that is. I had another fun little fact okay. that I'm not allowed to talk no. about, James. Oh, we're not talking <laughs> about Beetlejuice too. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking. Well, it doesn't count if it isn't released. Like it, this was like a can. It's in it's in it's in production. We're not talking about. It. Well, no, 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 no. This is a different Beetlejuice too. If it's, if it's not in any sort of progress, then I guess it's fine. We talked about the the canceled Job of the Hut movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So as long as it's basically officially canceled. this this is a different version of Beetlejuice two that wasn't even meant to be made. It was a okay. joke that Tim Burton did. Okay. So what what the entire thing was is that like after Beetlejuice one that came out, studios like. We got to make another one, right? We got to make another one. And then Tim Burton's like, <laughs> okay. And so he wrote an entire draft of Beetlejuice 2, where it's Beetlejuice in Hawaii. And he submitted it to them as a joke. And they were about to get it made until Tim Burton was like, I was kidding. That was a joke. You, wow. Did you read it? He's going to Hawaii. <laughs> and it almost was made based off of a joke that he put on the studio. Wow. Right, Respect. Wasn't made. Yeah, that's a way to, go, way to go. I would never dedicate that long for a joke. I, it's already hard for me to write as it is. I, 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 <laughs> you got to give him props that's for that. That's actually pretty sick. And uh, one thing I didn't know was that Frank and Weenie, 
the movie that came out in 2012. Didn't watch that. Same. Probably, probably won't rewatch that. Uh, Find out that Frank and Weenie's played by Al Pacino. I would watch that if I found that out. Uh, but it's actually based on a short that he did and and wrote and had the whole idea in 1984. Yeah, I didn't know that. So that was kind of yeah, cool how they they made that into a real thing. I think it was like with a real dog. They just put like costume on. Yeah, that and it was going to be done by Disney, but they thought it was too dark, so they fired him for it. <laughs> so and then they rehired him. Yeah, and they rehired him. And, they, and he also he <laughs> weirdly did the Edward Scissorhands uh, Cadillac commercial in 2021 with uh, Timothy Chalamet. Huh. Promoting the self drive. There was a Cadillac. Uh, commercial he did about the self-driving features of the new Cadillac in 2021. That's with Timothy Chalamet as Edward Scissorhands. And I think Winona Ryder made a cameo. She did. She plays Kim. God, can we please talk about her? In in uh, Beetlejuice? Yes. She, in Beetlejuice? In, in her in general, we absolutely... She, <laughs> she's a fantastic actress. Yes. In Beetlejuice, it is, want to get to. She is astounding in that movie like uh as 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 terms of like everybody's acting range because it, it's a very goofy script all right like you know it's hard for a lot of actors to pull off those lines one i didn't even th- i didn't even remember how like dark it is because she wanted to kill herself just so that she can be dead and you know living with the dead mm. which i was like wow we're really going here and then i had to check the rating i'm like what is this rated PG, right? <laughs> it's rated pg well, let's be fair though. I think PG thirteen didn't come around until like Temple of Doom. I think is when it when yeah, dude. It, into the scenes. But like, so. it was unlocking a lot of memories, man. Winona, what? Uh, she still what looks memories? good today. Oh, absolutely. She's aged like fine wine. Stunning. Yeah, yeah, and I think she's absolutely killing it in Stranger Things. Oh, uh, she is. She she's is. Ab- she's a. That, she's the kind of mom I wish season, I had. First season, wild wild range 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 talking to lights and then listening to the wall you want to know how hard it is as as an actor to like stare at a wall and just give out so much emotion clint eastwood does it daily so i think it's you know (laughs) i think it's great uh best movie i think we all agree actually i'm gonna do a little game count of three best beetle uh, best movie one wait of tim burton tim burton (laughs) okay two Three, Beetlejuice. Batman Beetle. Returns. Corpse Bride. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna move away from like superhero Corpse movies. Bride. Batman Returns. Be- Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. I I, right, I, Beetlejuice. I I I can't do that to myself. So I'm stuck with Batman it. Returns. Batman Returns. Yeah. Why return? Yeah. Why that one? Yeah, Batman Returns. There's no Prince song. Yeah, but like I'm a sucker for Christmas movies. That's actually, that's Colin, that's fair. You're a saint. Do you guys consider Nightmare Before Christmas a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie? It's a very, it's a very bipolar movie. It's very. Yeah. <laughs> I consider it a Thanksgiving movie. Okay. Sp- the first Spider Man is a good Thanksgiving movie. That's true. <laughs> Do we have to blur that out? I don't know what I'm allowed to say or no, what I'm no, not. No, no, you're fine. Say. That's a long cool. time ago. Uh, I don't consider it a Thanksgiving movie. Spider Man. Not the first one. What? Because here's my criteria for it being a, a certain holiday movie. It's got to have three things. The holiday has to be a, the, the deadline of the movie. Something's got to be happening before this time. Like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's a Thanksgiving movie. So he's using the movie to get back to his family before Thanksgiving. The holidays has to be some sort of obstacle or some sort of part of the movie, whether it be like, like uh what's the word i'm looking for um like by the way ricky i love when james does this i get excited yeah. i really do so this is so why, fun. This is why i consider an iron man 3 a christmas movie because i guess it's got to be something done by the holidays the holidays has to be used as some sort of macguffin as either progressing the story or holding everything and it has to be raised in this movie that it is happening during or before <laughs> the sad holiday your like, logic defunds my claims but it checks out like and not yeah. not just saying oh hey we're going somewhere for christmas christmas movie no it has to be like the whole thing has to be that not a throwaway line the whole thing so that's why die hard and iron man 3 is a christmas movie i stand on that 
We're not talking. No, wait. I was just talking about like Die Hard being a Christmas movie the other night when I was watching it, when I was going to the movies, which I'm allowed to say which movie, right? No. Cool. If it has a book, Christmas movie. Die Hard has a children's book. It does? No, it does. Same thing. I, oh I, my. I found it like three, There's, four years ago. I'm learning more and more about Die Hard. I really got to watch these movies. I you actually Die Hard? No, I've not. I know. Wicked movie. I've got to watch them. I watched it Ricky, where do you live? New York. New York? We'll get your ass here. <laughs> you can just stream it through the computer here. No, it means more if he's in person. It's actually true because uh, my girlfriend saw it last year. We were dog sitting for a friend of ours. Um, and she's never seen it. I'm like, you're with me. We're watching this movie. <laughs> loved it loved it so that's the that's the criteria if it's a good movie and that was the day that he married her well that was last year so uh, that was the day that he first married her yeah okay back on track so beetlejuice is i think in my Amazing. opinion we said burton's best work michael keaton had a damn good time doing that movie and i think everyone else did and they they had a hit Broadway show. I think that's over with now. I believe so. I'd have to check the Broadway stuff again. Had a, are you a big Broadway guy? Uh, not really. No, no. I know. You know what it is? Here's the thing about New York is not a peop- not a lot of people realize. There's like an Instagram video. If I can find it again, I'll send it to you. Mm-hmm. We have all this amazing stuff here, but we are very known for just putting it off. <laughs> really? We just don't do it. Like. New Yorkers are the last people you will hear, like, doing any of, like, the touristy New York stuff. Like, I've never oh. been to the Statue of Liberty. I've been here 24 years, and I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. And it, I can probably see it from outside my house. <laughs> I'm I can see the city from outside my house. I'm assuming you've been to Times Square, right? I'm, yeah, I go there a lot. Okay. That is, like, probably the most touristy thing that I do in New oh, York. Have you ever been to Midtown Comics in Times Square? New yes. Times- I go there whenever I can. I've been there too. Yeah. The one time I went to New York, that was the one thing I wanted to do. It was cool. It was really good. Yeah, Midtown Comics is amazing. There's a lot of writers and artists. I was mad when I moved. But I wish I picked a different date, but one of my favorite There's writers. A comic book store, by the way, not too far from where you and I live. So we got to go check it out. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to go at, yeah. as soon as possible. Also, but there's this. There's a writer, Tom King, who has made some incredible work that actually influenced a lot of like, you know, a lot of his work is getting adapted. The movie that was announced that's based off of his comic. And uh, I don't think I'm supposed to be saying that. Probably not. But no, um, you know, I'm going to move on from this just, because I don't want to get. He's a, he's a great writer. I do know. He's that. a great writer. He's a great that. writer. I'm sticking with the I, I, writer's thing. Yep. Uh, so, so you said. Ricky, you said it was Corpse Bride. Yes. Why is that your favorite? Um, so that was like one of the few movies I remember like the trailers for hmm. and everything. Cause I I'm trying to do you know what what year did it come out? I have it like uh, I got it right here. I think it was like two thousand five. Yeah, two thousand five. Wow. I thought it came out a little bit wow, later. Wow. Way to Colin, way to go you. Yeah. But so yeah, no, I remember the trailers and everything. I I remember the freaking announcer, like when they do the title screen, like usually they'll just show the title screen. The freaking dude narrating the trailer was like Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. Whoa. I was like, what? who's this guy? <laughs> it was like this deep, like voice. I was like, I was like, dang, this sounds interesting. I want to see this. I don't think I saw it in theaters. I think like we bought the DVD like when it came out eventually. I would just watch that movie on repeat religiously. I had to show that movie to my friends. I was like, you guys got to watch this movie. I think that was like the first big movie I ever like, like started like realizing that I like, I liked movies to the point where I'm like, watch this, watch this. You guys got to watch this. See, that's I really cool. With the whole stop motion thing. I thought uh, the movie Paranorman was done by Tim Burton. Hmm. Like Coraline, people think that Coraline is done by Tim Burton, but it's not. Yeah, see, I thought it was- Oh, that was another thought I was going to uh, bring up, is that like that was the second time that people confused Tim Burton for directing a movie, but he was just like a producer or a writer or a yeah. consultant. It's just yeah, like yeah, the studio put like his that. name on it. 
Yeah. And uh, for Paranorman, it was Chris Butler and Sam Fellow, the directors, and writer was then, again, Chris Butler. I didn't ever really see those kind of movies. It just wasn't, like, my thing. I did see enough of it to know what it was. I really just thought that that was Aaron Norman. And Ricky mentioned something I thought was also done by Tim Burton, but it, I didn't know it was done by Tim Burton. I thought it wasn't, but it is. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. Which is, okay, funny enough for me. Growing up when I was living in California, like I raised there until I was like, you know, 10 or something, I don't know. Point being, when I was staying at my aunt's house, uh, her daughter, my cousin, would watch Tim Burton movies. And the two we always, always watched was Nightmare Before Christmas and Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I didn't know that until recently when we were doing this episode that that was done by him. So that was so weird seeing Pee-wee Herman and Tim yeah. Burton in the same movie and name and category. But there are two yeah. other big ones. I didn't know that he did. Second one being Big Fish. You guys yeah. know about this movie. Yes. I love Big Fish. That is a that movie. Big Fish is a good hit. movie. Genuinely, didn't know Tim Burton. Yeah, just was blown away. And the last one, Mars Attacks. Yeah, that one was a movie. Just with- I saw that like a few months ago. I think for the first time ever, like way before you invited me on the podcast, way before I did anything for Tim Burton, like. I think it was like on Netflix or something. I think it was. Yeah, I think that's where we watched it. We just saw it. And then my mom's friend was like, oh, this movie is great. It's Tim Burton. I was like, oh, my God, this is Tim Burton. I got to watch this. Wild. Dude. Dude. Good movie. As a kid, there was only one, because uh, it was on in the background. Like, you know how, like, there's just random in the background in your parents' house. And it was Mars Attacks. But it was, like, the scene, I think it was, I think, I think they were hitting the climax. And like it was that scene where like the the heads are on out of the jars and on the ground, and then I think like the ship or wherever they were on like the uh, the ground was like tilting, and then they, these two heads like they were like husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, and they just came in for a kiss, and it was just this weird oh image that has been in my head for years. Yes, and, what you're talking about, yeah. And it's only recently that I was like, that was Mars Attacks. <laughs> it is weird seeing the movies you saw as a kid realizing what they were like and going back and to watch them and everything i i don't know it, it's so weird seeing the weird like the mindset of a kid done yeah. and then i was an adult uh one thing i do want to talk about beetlejuice is that i feel so bad not bad for gina davis but it was more like i feel so like i'm in shock that's not the that was not the right word shock because Gina Davis has had the craziest life in movies. Let me just read out what she's done in movies. Wait, before you continue, uh, Gina Davis, which one was she in? She was the, was she the red hair? No, no, she was the she was the wife of Alec Baldwin. Oh, oh. I can't remember, okay. I can't remember her name for the life of me in the movie. But okay, okay. This is what in, in movies, this has been her life. She dies in Beetlejuice and fights Beetlejuice, gets resurrected in Beetlejuice, and then fights Beetlejuice again. Loved a man who turned into a fly. Adopts a rat as a son, dies in a car crash off a cliff. If you don't know these movies, that's Beetlejuice, The Fly, Stuart, Stuart, Little, Little. Stuart Little, I was gonna and, and Thelma and Louise. That and also she's played baseball for the war. All of those movies, fantastic League of Their Own. Fantastic movies. I think League of Their Own is her best movie, though. And I I I love the shot in the opening of the movie Beetlejuice where it is the the actual town and then it does that zoom in and it becomes the miniature yeah the house and everything yeah and yeah so many so much mini and i am a sucker Sunburn loves his miniatures i love it i'm a sucker for it i'm a sucker yeah. for miniature they look good for practical effects and yeah. it looks so good and i think we need to kind of go back to miniatures like so many we, movies we you do. didn't know were done on miniatures are done like Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, Phantom. Well, you Menace. told me Batman Begins with the uh, miniature of the Batmobile on the roof. When that you told me, it blew dark. my mind. It I was, was like, I didn't night. connect. Or whichever. Uh, no, no, no. Batman Begins. No, Batman like, Begins. on the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, when he's driving on the roof of the building and everything, that's a miniature. It's like a two foot, three foot long Batmobile just zooming along. Yeah. Uh, well, also the Dark Knight did also do a miniature for the chase scene 
where he's running and he hits the semi truck and it pops up on the highway like that. That little highway thing was a miniature too. Still awesome. That's so satisfying watching that thing get so lifted good. and dropped. It's so cool. It just hits the spot. It's so good. But I love his work of miniatures and I think the VFX is still great. Like the bed shot where she's floating and he turns the, the sheets and she's floating midair. God, the movie's so good. Batman There's so many wonderful scenes. prosthetics as well. I'm sorry to oh, continue gosh. on this, but I want to talk about the prosthetics. Oh, the prosthetics. prosthetics. Holy sh**. Yeah, P goes crazy with prosthetics. Oh, what? Well, especially with the the, the thing. And yeah. The oh, yeah, like that. And the puppetry is amazing. That's oh, another God. thing he does amazingly is the puppetry. Yeah, and, and the stop motion. Like we mentioned oh, yeah. Nightmare and Corpse Bride and Frank and Weenie really set the, the, the standard for how good yeah. those movies need to be. As well as some uh, of the stop movie. motion is like a bit like rough, but there are a couple of times that like, you know, I you can sort of, you get used to it and you're like, regardless of how yeah. this looks, still impressive of the time. Oh yeah. And and him and Ardman, the guys that do the Wallace and Gromit movies and everything. Yes. Ardman's are, amazing. Oh God. They're just they're pioneers. I think, I think mainly Ardman because they, they've been doing it longer. But they're awesome. They're so good. And I, I, I kind of miss stop motion movies, like, like the new. Yeah, well, Leica was movie. killing it. You know, Leica Studios, the guys that did Paranormal, yes. Coraline. Did they do Kubo? They did. I never did. I sadly never got to see that movie I, in the theaters. I wanted to see it in the theaters, but I will watch that movie. Mm -hmm. And I think their last movie that they did was, uh, was Zach Galifianakis like, and, uh, uh, and uh, Hugh missing Jackman. Link. It was the Missing Link. Yeah, the Missing. Link. I don't know. Do you guys know what happened to them? Because, like, they just stopped doing movies. I think, they either, I think they went bankrupt or got bought out. Yeah. Because I, I, I had, like, a I'll feeling it that it was probably the missing link that, like, killed them. Like, they didn't make their money back. But, like, that was, oh, man. What was it? I love like uh, Leica. Leica? L-I-A-I-K-A. -E -E. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So, Batman Returns, though. Batman Returns, dude. It is genuine fun if if you're like a if you're a sad boy like me it just hits all of the right spots like it just and plus michelle pfeiffer she <laughs> you know i mean i don't, I don't know who's gonna somehow end up on michelle i, dude, I don't they, i don't mean to they're be still pit, in business they what are they're still in they business are. they did wendell and wild what's that uh stop motion movie with uh jordan peele <laughs> Uh, Keegan Michael Key. I forgot about that movie. Oh, yeah. oh that right. Was that? that was them. Oh man. Oh my god. I'm so happy you told me that. I. I they I, have I, any I, um upcoming projects or something? They, do, they are working on stuff. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. They, 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 said, they, said, they, they said they still got stuff in motion. So I don't know exactly right. what they just said they still do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. So that means they're still going. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, they're an underrated company. Yeah, those we companies need to just like band together and be like, "Hey, man, we're in it to win it." Yeah, seriously, Got we're this. fighting on the same team. Yeah, yeah, it's fighting for the same face model. So, Batman <laughs> Returns, just because you're sad, is your is your favorite? No, no, uh, no, no. I just got sidetracked. Um, <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Dude, you're a freaking genius today for uh, transitions. Please, please go on. I want to hear the rest of your. Yeah. Thing. So, it, it it is so fun. Like it is a, it, it, it gets darker. Literally the opening of the movie is two parents that had a kid get deformed. You hear the dad screaming down the hallway. Oh! And then they have, <laughs> I, I, I laugh every time this happens, but like when they're running up with the baby carriage, I don't, I don't know if Ricky, you remember. So they're running up with the baby carriage of baby penguin and they're like jogging. And then there's a guy that's like uh walking by. I think that, uh, no, there was a guy that was jogging by and then they stopped and they're like, Hey, how you doing? And then when he turned away, they just like dumped, <laughs> he just dumped the baby in the fucking river. <laughs> what? what? So that's Penguin's origin and opens with Penguin's origin of his uh, neglectful rich parents. Um, and they, uh, when when Oswald was born, he was born to look like a stupid baby. And they're like, this is an ugly baby and we have to kill it. Because also they they kept the baby in a cage and there was a cat that was like with the cage. And then baby Oswald just sucks the cat in, presumably eating it. And it just gets worse from there. But also the Christmas aesthetic of the movie in Gotham is the best aesthetic. 
Like it, I, 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 again, I don't know if I'm just like a sucker for Christmas or Christmas aesthetic works for and everything, but like, it just, it, it, it's, it's the way that it makes Gotham glow and feel lived in. Cause we've it, at this time, even till this day, we haven't really seen a lot of like holiday movies, like in terms of like superhero, like what we know, like what, you know, the current market of like superhero films, you know, I, cause I, 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 I'd kill a cat just to see a Spider-Man movie set in Christmas. Like I really Guardian would. special in Christmas. Guardian special in. I can't talk about it. Well, God it's it. it's, it's yeah, yes. we're, not, we're not we're not gonna talk about it. It is it is. Cut it this. Is, Cut so, this part. No, you're, you're fine. There's a lot of great stuff that I think happens in Batman Returns that I need to go rewatch because I don't remember it. So I gotta go finish that one. Uh, before we wrap up, Tim Burton's thing. Like I said, he's got 16 writer credits, 41 director credits. The writing that he has, and Ricky, you said it best, really just, it's obvious, but it's very macabre, and it, it sets a lot of great tones for what the movie's message is and um, the weight of all the dialogue with, like, especially Edward Scissorhands, I think is um, a movie that carries weight at the same time and also is very kind of, like, humorous in, in, in some fashions, and Nightmare Before Christmas, where it's, like no, like no story feels the same is what I'm, I'm trying to get at. No story feels the same. They're all very original and they're very creative. And the stuff that he's now doing with TV with the Adams family, I've been hearing good things. I have not watched it, but Burton, as sad as he is and as very niche for fans, he is truly uh, very creative in set designs, like what he said for miniatures and how he incorporates that into filmmaking. Because I'll think- take it a step further. He's a visionary. He's got great like, vision with the camera. Like a huge, yeah. like without Tim Burton, the industry would be completely different. And I will, I, I, I will die on that hill. Exactly. Just think about it. No, I, I hear you. Um, and I think it's very unique. That's all I can really say. It's like camera style, directing. Even if his movie is shit, it's still distinct from the rest. Oh, very. Yes. Yeah, even if it flops. Rick, and, you got anything to go with uh, after you know, Colin? Do your thing. Just want to say. No, 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 Ricky. I want to hear from you, man. Yeah. Um, I think Tim Burton is. Mm, people say Spider Man's most responsible for like a lot of the superhero movies we have now. I think Batman is more responsible. Wow. Yes. Good man. Good man. It also did give us a great, you know, Michael Keaton. Yes. You know, like, yes. I love oh shit! I forgot to tell you this. Beetlejuice came out before Michael Keaton was cast oh, we as were, Batman, yeah. we but nobody that. in the studio was thinking of Michael Keaton playing the Joker. In another universe, he played a good Joker. Just look at his performance. I, in I like I like Nicholson. I, I, Nicholson listen, I love definitely... Nicholson too. I just love playing with the idea of in a different timeline. What was that like? Jack Nicholson playing Batman. Jack, Jack, I'm Batman. <laughs> That'd be awful. That'd be awful. I'd actually like to see Batman with Jack Nicholson as Batman and Michael. Here's Keaton. Batman. <laughs> He's like, I'm the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, you think it actually would? He'd still use Beetlejuice's voice as the Joker. I would like, hope so. Smile that face. Yeah, I think he would probably use like yeah. like it works. Same, you know, Ren is you know. Same resonance of voice, but not the exact same voice. Sure, 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 sure. Ricky, you got anything to add? Um, no, I think I've said almost right. everything you say. Yeah. All right. Before we actually go on to the next topic, best worst Tim Burton movies. I think we all agreed what the worst one is. Dumbo. Mars attacks. Mars yeah. attacks. I'm just with you. Don't you dare. <laughs> not Dumbo. Dumbo. Yeah. Colin. Dumbo. Yeah. That's Dumbo. It's such a forgettable movie. I, I love them, but like they made that live action. Again, oh, yeah. Danny DeVito, and then, then I think it was Colin Farrell that, that was... Yeah, Colin Farrell. Yeah, he was yeah. in there. And Michael oh. Keaton. No. There's actually only one good thing about Dumbo, and it was when they painted his face. He actually looked kind of sad, and it... it, it, it you watched it? Kind of I watched it, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it. I don't think I'll... It was, it, I think it's... I think it's actually the only Disney live-action movie I've ever seen. Really? Did you see the I Jungle think Book? so. No, I never did. You haven't seen Alice in Wonderland? You're right. Yeah, no, never mind. Do you guys like that one? Do you like his his version of Alice in Wonderland? No. Right? 
It was, I was it like, as a kid. I don't know why. The as third a kid, episode. I thought it was fine. Growing up, I'm like, because I, wa- I finally watched the original not that long ago. Mm. And I'm Very like, different. yeah, it is so different. Very different. And it's uh, the third act that really kills me where Alice is now fighting a monster. Like, it, yeah. like, it really... All I and remember is that cool. really weird dance. That yeah, he the does. dance Johnny Depp does. <laughs> Fortnite emote. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, the dragon, though, that stuck with me, too. And I don't remember who played the Cheshire Cat, but I did kind of like the VFX they did with him. I did, too. I thought that was clever as hell. Oh, and Helena Bonham Carter as the Queen of, Queen of Hearts. Yeah. yeah. Big old uh, head. Funko yeah. Pop Lady. Do you think do you think Tim Burton did that on purpose? Like he got into an argument with her and he just refers like you have a little too much of a big head. No, right. I just think and, they she and then like later the on he's making Alice in Wonderland. He's like, No, I, I used to know somebody. No, Colin, no. It's, uh, it's she's a got great range. I know. Let, let, I'm not I don't want I don't want her. disrespect to the Miss Bonham Carter, okay? One of my it. my favorite movie of all time is Fight Club, and she was great as Marla. She's and I love her in that movie. She is really good. good. And she uh, also did. Uh, I actually am allowed to say this. Well, so, um, did you guys know that uh, that that infamous line of like, "Oh my God, I haven't been bleeped like that since uh, grade school." She actually didn't know that uh, grade school meant middle school. She she confused like schools. Until later on, somebody told her what that meant. And she's like, oh. Oh, is grade school like high school in the in, – in Middle school. I, know, I think overseas. so. It's middle school. Oh, overseas, it's middle school. Overseas is middle school. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, did I change your perspective? <laughs> I thought grade school was like a higher level of education over there in the UK. Nope. Wow. Because I know they call college finishing school. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. Something like that. Yeah, they call you're it finishing done. school. Because you're, you're finishing school. You're done and you're becoming an adult. Which makes yeah, sense. I, I, I won't, James. I yeah, won't. Colin, but don't. I, you got me. You shouldn't have said that, Ricky. Now you just gave him an arsenal of things you should never <laughs> say. Before we get on to the I other thing, I call it briefly, uh, kind of struck in there. Uh, the SAG AFTRA team met Monday, Wednesday, Friday of this week of, of, of the recording. So, uh, I think it was like the second, the fifth, no, the, the first, the third, and the fifth, I think. Whatever. And this one is uh, for the actors, this right? This is the SAG-AFTRA, yeah. SAG okay. is the actor striking who have now, I think, gone close to 100 days of striking. Uh, they are still fighting for the fair wages, compensation, no AI. Same thing as writers, just different um, Good. Different standard for what they are. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's going along great because they're meeting again Monday. And the people between the AMPTP and sag they're both working also right now. So they've met three times this week. They're working over the weekend and plan to meet Monday. That was announced Wednesday. So they're really spanning this meeting out, which is good. Yeah. They keep meeting. They keep coming back to the board because sag met a total, I think, of seven times. But three times in a row is when it got progressive and then the strike end. So what I remember reading is that... Um, they they met to discuss the terms of what happened with the WGA because they, they weren't in the same room. SAG and WGA was just AMPTP and, and WGA to talk about what their deal was, what SAG is going for, and then the whole negotiation entirely. So this is good progress. We're getting on. They're going strong. I still haven't seen any donation updates. I'm assuming that the ones that WGA had, because WGA is still striking with them, showing support. Uh, I think it's the same thing. They'll just take a donation and put it towards their fund i'm assuming i haven't heard anything but i I hope that that's the case uh vfx workers at disney and marvel have voted unanimously to unionize so we got another strike coming well potentially potentially video games are potentially also going on strike a lot of strikers going out right now way to go for everyone this is a huge domino effect i I think i said you know that's a good thing about it i think last episode and i spoke when i was saying like oh boohoo people wanting like good rights i was meaning like why are the companies crying that they're setting a precedent that they need these rights to work. They need these did, help. Did like, you guys see that Bob Iger quote where he was yeah. talking about? Yeah, it's just like, that that one really that ago. one. Yeah. About it too. What was it, Rick? No, no, I'm just remembering that. Yeah, it was like months ago that he said it was okay. wild. So yeah, because like, I, 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 I saw it again and I recently and it just it reminded me of like just how 
icky I feel about huge corporations like Disney. Listen, you can be a huge corporation, but also there's that level of respectability. And I feel like corporations like that have lost, not even from the actors, not even just from the writers, not even just from the directors, but also the consumers as well. Yeah. Oh, and a lot of it's gone down it's, the it really is. It really is. It, it's a weird time we're living in right now. It's a great and, and It's good too, because yeah. like the writers got what they wanted. Yeah. Looks like actors are now about to get what they want, They're hopefully. And good. video games. Like, you know, yeah. it just. That means, like, though, we may not be able to talk about the Insomniac video games. <laughs> oh, wow. Someone's very passionate. He's, I he's, he's been waiting to get all 19 inches of Venom in him. I want that 19 inches. Okay. Uh, but what I meant was saying that, like, I don't know why studios are crying about wanting to pay their actors, writers, fair wages, give them the help they need. When smaller companies like A24 and everything can abide by their contracts, no problem. Yeah. Like, it, it makes no oh, sense. And they're like, A24 is on good behavior? They're, they've been on great behavior. They've, they've, they've been able to go, I think, three, four movies now saying, like, yeah, whatever deal you want, we're we're good for it well yeah sign it. i like, love that company it's so yeah. 24 a24 is rising in the ranks right now and i am here yes, for this they're so good they've got uh, so many good projects coming out like dicks like, the musical That's, that I has been hotel after. that is another one to look out for i don't know if you guys saw the um what's it's it called? It's has a, been I hotel see i didn't see it you should watch the um pilot it's on youtube it's free to watch, there's a spinoff show called Hell of a Boss. Oh, okay. Recommend. I thought that was the same. Okay, I've seen it's I've the seen same Hell of studio. Boss. Cool. Yeah. How do you how do you spell the hotel? H a z b i n, has been hotel. That's cool. Oh, has been hotel. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Uh, but again, I don't know why studios are crying that they have to pay their workers and they're worried about a precedent of people money. standing up for this. I, I know it's money. It's just like, why? Like why? 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 It's why? it's so dumb and simple. It's it really, really, really it's really laziness. It's neglect. Yeah. It's you know no no self awareness at all. Yeah. And, oh, and get this. Did you know that Paramount released Mean Girls on TikTok in about twenty three parts on October third, which is like the whole thing with Mean Girls. They released the entire the thing movie on TikTok. Why? Why would you want that? Why? Okay. A funny movie. But B, why go around and like cut around corners to pay the writers compensation for their movie being seen? Billions of people are on TikTok. So stupid. And revenge oh. is now served in a dish on TV because Drew Barrymore, I think, lost three writers that were WGA members because she was wanting to go back to her show one week before the strike ended. That sucks. She could have held out one more week and kept those rioters, but she wanted to continue. And how is Drew Barrymore? Because I only I know, know her I'm... like f as the little girl from ET and the mom from Santa Clarita Diet, but I don't know if she's problematic as like a I've person. Heard, I've heard g good things about her from people yeah. that she's worked with, but all right, cool. I just wanted to make sure that like she wasn't just being. You a wanted dick to make about sure you were throwing an insult or a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, I had I had a few in the chamber, but I had to put it back on safety. Yeah, I, I think she's she's a pretty good person. She's all about positivity and everything on her TikToks yes, and really everything. Is. So I don't know. It's it's I just don't know why she had to she had to go back to her show. I like that Keanu Reeves interview she did. Oh my yeah. god, that was yeah. hilarious! It's a great interview. But it's just that like I don't know. I, I wish you got to fight for what you're in love with. Are you a lover or a fighter? And he's like, well. I'm a, I'm a fighter. It's like, no, I'm a lover. If you're a lover, you gotta be a fighter. And then he goes like, oh, like even he knows he was Yeah, he knew that was Quinn. <laughs> it's like he was saying it in like a Jane Austen book. Yeah, uh, wait, 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 what did he say? He said, um, it's like, if, you, if you're a lover, then you have like, to be a fighter because if you yeah. love something... You well, know, if you don't fight, fight for your love, what kind of love do you have? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Even he knows, he's like, I did not just say yeah. that. I gotta make Wait, another that's, it, that's the new meme. I'm out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this show. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's sadly an unprecedentedly. I think I'm using that word right. It just didn't need to be canceled. It's called Inside Job, Netflix. I think I've heard of it. Is it the one with the presidency and like you know underground government? Yes. Um, okay. Man, I, I I only saw like one episode. It wasn't really hit. Okay, so I, by the way, I did use I'm presently wrong, but I meant like it didn't need to happen. It was unjustified. There's the word. 
unjustified cancellation mm, justice sound like because it's basically <laughs> like what if all the conspiracy theories were real and then some and it was like it was a, it's a comedy show on on uh netflix where was i going with this um it was sadly canceled when it shouldn't have been no how did i get to this point in the conversation <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about before it was Drew Barrymore, Barrymore, Keanu Reeves inside oh, Keanu Reeves. There was an episode where where the main girl's mom is dating Keanu Reeves, and you find out he's a vampire, and that's why he's been staying so young. And he's that like, explains so much. And he's like talking, and I was like, Coco, I need to go unflex my abs, and he goes, <laughs> it's just him, and he's like, Oh my god, it's John Wick from the movie John Wick Two. And he goes, and John Wick Three, and John Wick Four. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. That show, so good. If you guys haven't seen it, seriously, go watch it. It was an unjust I have to get another Netflix account. Uh, my uh, my parents uh, took me off of theirs now that they're uh, separating. What? So, uh, yeah. You know this. No, you didn't. We'll talk later. <laughs> well, no, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It's it was not- something that everybody wanted to happen. It makes everybody happier. All right. Let, not, don't. Okay. All right. Let me just point this out real quickly. Here's like a 30 second TED talk. Some divorces actually have happy endings. All right. Yeah, I, it's I just, get that. So I get that all I was trying to say is that like, I, I need a new Netflix account. So James, you want to hook me up? All right. They're, they're doing the thing now where you got to be on the same Colin, we'll, we'll just, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll talk off screen about this. I'm mad at you. I don't want Netflix to read this and cancel our account. So thing is, is that, the strikes are still going. They're going strong. Probably going to be reaching a deal sometime soon. Hopefully, by next week, it is over. Just keep going, Sag. You guys are doing great. Uh, did I bring the? Did I bring it down? Are you not, sad? Um, not happy with it that that's going on. Uh, in other news, this is going to be something that's going to be bringing the mood back up. Toys R Us. Jeffrey the giraffe. Oh, they're God. back. They're back from the dead. They are opening up 24 new stores across America, including airports and cruises. I don't How think many they're including locations cruises in Texas. In thing. It's like they're going to open a store on a cruise. I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know. I don't know the locations. They just announced that, but they are back, baby. They are back. They had smaller stores in malls that I did see, but they're back. And all I want to do is just walk in to the Costco version of toys. And just see the giant tower of bikes, and all. I just want the childhood back. You know, I That's remember when I when the movie Robots came out. There was like this. I've talked about it here. This little thing you could put on your shoes that were Rodney Copperbottom's boots. And whenever you walk, they make like a robot and like wah wah. And I wore those out the store, like buying new shoes. Respectable. Yeah. So. Dude, the Lego aisle was where it was at. Ah, uh, yes, the Lego aisle. The Lego aisle. Where the they, had the that, Lego they, had area. they had a whole area dedicated yeah. to it. And the, oh man, dude, it was. Do you guys remember Bionicles? Yes, dude. We had a family yeah. in Florida who had like like this, like three of these just oh, covered in yeah. Bionicles. I used to kind of like combine them and make like hybrid Bionicles of like different things. Like, you guys remember Hero Factory? Yes. I remember Hero Factory. That was that mm. was my jam. So God, good. so good. Oh gosh, I miss early two thousands toys. And actually, I've been oh. doing uh, a list on TikTok, which you guys can check us out on two podcasts at TikTok dot com uh, of of early two thousand go to items. And I did one of like the the portable DVD player that was like like that big, and you can flip open. It was like the size of a really small laptop. I miss those things. So Toys R Us. I remember- they're bad. My dad, my dad, he he had to he 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 was cool. Like just it was a it was an abrupt like let's go to the store. I'm gonna get you a portable DVD player because there was like a movie that was on commercial, and my dad was so cool. I was like, oh, I gotta watch that movie. And but like we didn't have like a thing to play it on, and he goes like, we'll just go to Walmart real quickly, and it's like down the street, and he just picked it up for me. And not only did I get that movie, I got a couple of them. It was like those old Marvel animated movies. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Like Invincible yeah. Iron Man, Ultimate yeah. Avengers. Uh, Heroes of Tomorrow. Did you guys ever watch that one? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Marvel Comics uh, made that universe canon in there. Like, like it's not like, you know, it, it, it was 
I don't even, it, it's a long explanation, but it was amazing to see them come back in comic book form. I'm like, oh my God, that's my childhood. Yeah. Like, yeah that I was gotta, so cool. I gotta find that comic book. Uh, before oh, I actually, I got, ooh, got it. On. You got it? I got, you it. got it. Ooh. I got ooh, it. Nice. <laughs> you got I'll it. I'll give you my Netflix. You give me the coat. The, the comic. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. Yeah, it's a good trade off. Uh, before we actually officially wrap up, Colin mentioned Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, and that's what brought me onto this list. So IGN released their 25 best superhero movie villains of all time. Now, I'm not oh, I saw that. Through, yeah, I'm not going to go through all 25. I'm going to go through the top 10. You guys can go check it on IGN.com. But I'm going to go from 10. I'm going to go to one. So number 10 is Loki. Tom Hiddleston's Loki, uh, which is. It should be lower. I'm kidding. I just wanted to get that reaction out of you. I just say things. I just like leaves a call. You're done. (laughs) You're done. Uh, So Loki, great villain. I think one of his best, uh, just like just one of the best in Marvel. That one of the best character arcs in Marvel. Uh, Yeah, yeah. The first season, especially now. Yeah, (laughs) and that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Just uh, he grew on me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Number nine, Doc Ock. Now, it doesn't specify if it is comic book Doc Ock or if it is Alfred Molina. I'm going to say it's Alfred Molina because it's movie villains. Yeah. So. Wow, really, Colin? You're not really – you're not getting with it? He should be higher. Well, he's number nine. If it's Alfred Molina's, yeah. Well, hold well, on. Uh, wait, hold on. I haven't heard the other – I haven't heard the yeah, other no. ones. You'll, the like, other you'll, one. you'll like this next – you'll like these I'm going to let him cook. Ones. You're going like to let him cook. Eight. Number eight is the penguin, Danny DeVito. <laughs> There's no way. Like, I love Penguin. I love DeVito. Not that high. Not nine. Not nine. Number seven, Nicholson's Joker. Okay, that makes sense. That one's wild. That one, he's he done a lot in that movie. You defined I already he said this before, but this is bipolar. That is very this well is said. really weird. Yeah, this is wild. Uh, number six, Magneto was just specifically Ian McKellen's Magneto. That makes sense. Yes. He was. No, I don't know. Fast Benders. Fastbender's great, Fast but McKellen set the standard, dude. I know Ian McKellen set the standard, but I also have a stronger attachment to Fastbender because, especially with X Men First Class, of like where he came from, he actually saw it. Now, yeah. Ian McKellen's Magneto in the first X Men movie is amazing. Don't get me wrong. X Two, but I don't know. Not he was X3. a bit. X2. He was a bit sassy in X Two. I, I like I like my sassy needle. Do you remember? Do you remember? He's like, I love what you've done with your hair. No, actually, I don't. I probably should watch X two again. Yeah, he just was like he was being such a bitch to Rogue, like you know, just like you know, being the dicks. Okay, he was, he was like my mom. Oh, oh. <laughs> he was my oh mom. my god! Okay, leave the family out. Green Goblin's Willem. Defoe. Bring it back. Nope. Right. Defoe, Defoe's Green Goblin is number five. Okay, that he definitely deserves to be in at least the top. Yeah, five. At least, yeah, was, at least in the top ten. But because I know that he did great in the first Spider-Man movie, which is another full circle thing. Yeah, uh, but he did absolutely. God, speech, man. Hey, and he did even better in No Way Home because that fight scene in the hallway where he. Oh yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> Number four, Killmonger, played by uh, Michael B. Jordan. Interesting. Again, these are greatest TV. These are the greatest movie yeah, villains. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. And yeah, four, okay. No manga. I love that. I love so that. good. He was yeah, very so, good. so good. Number three. Here we go. Top three. Number yeah. three. Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman. This the list is rigged. Did I make this? <laughs> like it. It was like 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 she. she oh my she god! A bird no. in her mouth. That is commitment. She did hold a bird in That's... her mouth, and that flew. Oh, that was real? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, they anyway. Tried, they tried going fake. Oh. <laughs> Wanted authenticity. <laughs> All right, Tim Burton tried, but he he, he wanted, you know. But I, like, the, no, no. I love Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, but no. No, that's the, I don't, that's okay. not, I don't, okay. when I think of villains, I don't think of Catwoman. I th- she's more of, like, a nuisance. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying two. to be mean, but that's real. Number two. Sorry, on one of the comments, it says, y'all put Catwoman over Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Oh. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, number two, the Joker, Heath Ledger. Iconic. That man. Yes. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> on this find list. it. 
Ledger perfected it. That's right, what I said. Yeah, expect. yes. Nicholson defined it, perfected it by Ledger. Ricky yes. perfectly said. It. And number one, let's want you to see if you guys can get this. Number one. Colin, what do you think? I'm not going to say right or wrong until Ricky answers. And, and like, highly, ba- highly buries Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> not the character, just the movie. Yeah, oh, I, I figured. The movie itself is the, the movie. Itself movie, is the movie itself. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, no. Wait, no. I got it. I got it. You said your answer. Disney. Okay. Ricky. I'm going to go with Thanos. Yes, it was Thanos. God, I that was my man answer. succeeded. The man That's succeeded. The... Uh, I mean, he went most of the time. You guys can go check out the rest of us on IGN. I will say that for Colin, because I know he likes this, Ozymandias is number 18. Hmm. That makes me mad that you put Ozymandias at 18. Michelle put, Pfeiffer, 3. They also put, uh, I think it's, ha- they put Hackman Lex Luthor over Mysterio. And I get it, but no. Which they Mysterio? Put Paul Wait, Dano's like- Riddler at 19. And then they put Bane at 32. Kind of get it. He didn't really do a lot, but he did yeah. commit a very big thing of scary. more, more than some of the 10 you showed. Well, you, you tw- the last two, number 24 is the Phantasm from Mask of the Phantasm. And then number 25 is Colin Farrell's The Penguin. Who? Interesting. <laughs> Who? No, I no. Can, I don't. Man. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not gonna ruin that person. I don't head. think I don't think Darth Vader even made it on the list. Hold on. No. Hold on. Wait, is it like comic book? No, it's oh. Comic book villains? Maybe. It just says superhero villains. Oh, superhero yeah. movie villains. So yeah. yeah, I was gonna say like Darth Vader shouldn't be on that Darth list. Darth Vader should definitely be top three for sure. Oh yeah, oh, you guys don't know that crossover he did. Dude, I love to see a Marvel Star Wars crossover. Like, I know it's never gonna happen. Do you ever see that clip of Parks and Rec where um, what's his name? Oh, Patton Oswalt does that. Yeah, uh, yeah he the does the Star Wars. Yeah, the monologue of Star Did Wars. You ever see the extended? Like, he was riffing. Yes, for a long he time. went he on for a while. Like ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes straight of him just Wild. going. Wild. Uh, last two things before we actually. Uh, sorry, last thing before we actually wrap up here. I've said that four times now, but. Ricky and I on our Cinema Showcase episode were talking about John Wick and how he saw the third one, actually the first three, right around the time Endgame was coming out. And your, your buddy was saying that the John Wick Chapter 3 trailer may be Endgame's trailer. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, the official movie trailer, got 43 million views. That's a lot of views. That's still a lot of views. I helped. Uh, that trailer was on my repeat. We all did. Avengers Frank's Endgame's not- official trailer. 156 million views. Yeah, that was a that too. Yeah, during the uh, Marvel respectable days, where everyone uh, it seemed it seemed so simple back then. Everyone was on the same page. Yeah, the times the times were were very. I I reminisced on it like Obi Wan in the Star Wars. He was like, he was the best star pilot in the galaxy, cunning warrior, and a good friend. He was a general during the Clone Wars. Okay, I don't. <laughs> that'll have to be yeah that'll be closing credits on episode 23 ricky thank you for joining way to go dude you did thank awesome. you so much man it was pre- having me. it's great to be here man I'll definitely have you back for sure man awesome. if you guys haven't checked out 2v podcast we're on apple podcast spotify and youtube so be sure to subscribe and follow there uh be sure to check us out on instagram and tiktok we're both there to be podcast if you guys like this episode be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because when we post we don't want you guys to miss it so thank you guys again for watching we'll see you guys thank next you time. guys